Is it cheaper to build your own paver patio fire pit area? DIY style or to hire a contractor? Let's find out. But why go small when we can go large and save more money? Oh yeah, and here's the space we're gonna build it in. Starting with the layout lines, let's make a 15 foot diameter circle. Yeah, that's gonna be huge. But before I get into the price quotes from contractors and the cost breakdown to go the DIY route, I wanted to take a beat and talk about something that's been weighing on my mind, like an elephant on the back, and that's retirement. What's a working man gonna do to retire at 67? Or possibly sooner? I mean, what are you gonna do? Oh, and you see this technique that I'm using with the level and the pipes? This is making sure that I get the dirt nice and level. After all, the foundation is key to every project. Now let's move on to the next stage, which is gonna be laying the paper base, the compact gravel. Now I went with these bags from a local hardware store because honestly, I was able to save myself a bulk discount and a military discount, where the local gravel yards that deliver it by the bucket or the yard wouldn't offer those discounts. I don't know if it was because they're small businesses versus a big corporation, I'm not sure. But for me, it was more important to go the cheaper route, so that's why I went with the local hardware store in these bags. And this crushed gravel, this is what I'm using. But let's get back to that retirement conversation. Honestly, I'm curious. And I trust your opinion much more than the Google machine. But I dove into a bunch of research and I'm just wondering, is everything fear-mongering out there or just a bunch of misinformation being given? For example, I used to think having a 401k was the answer. But after a bunch of research on this, all the top financial gurus are saying 401ks are a scam. Basically, the gurus are saying this. When you go to retire at 65 or 70 years old, the tax bracket is going to be so astronomical that your money will have no value, basically. And with inflation and everything being what it is, I mean, it's kind of a valid point. Tell me what you think about that, because I'm seriously curious and I'm trying to plan out our retirement. And I know I'm not that young, but I'm not that old either. And I still have time to set things up and take care of my family. Oh, and don't be bougie. Tamp this thing down and use a little muscle. Nobody needs to go rent a compactor or any fancy equipment. After all, this is about sweat equity and saving money, so use a little muscle and get it done. I mean, that's how I see it anyway. I'm always doing a lot of home projects, and I'm just a DIYer, but I want to come across as professional as I can. So if you're a professional paper guy that's watching this video, please chime in and let me know what I could do better, or if I did it okay. For me, I feel like everything is going great. I'm having a blast. It's just so daggum hot out here. With the heat index, it's like 115. Some of these days were 125. Oh yeah, and the pavers? Here's what I chose, and here's the pattern that I'm going with. But I know, I know, you wanna talk numbers. How much did it cost versus going with the contractor? So let's get into it. First off, contractors charge around $25 a square foot with additional upcharges if it's round, or if a small retaining wall is needed. But to my surprise, they also upcharge if they have to do groundwork with sod removal. I mean, are they living in fairy tale land? Of course you're gonna need to have some groundwork done. Not everyone's got a slab of concrete where they want pavers put on it. I mean, let's be real. And then my son popped in to make sure I was doing a good job. We make a good team, kinda like Batman and Robin. But once I assured him everything was nice and flat, I was able to get back to it. So. The contractor quotes came in, and all of them were just a smidge over 10000 It was going to be broken down like this. $5,200 for materials and labor, $1,000 upcharge for it being round, $1,800 for the small little retaining wall that I'm about to add, an additional $2,000 for sod removal and groundwork, and again, all that added up is just a smidge over ten k. Wow, $10,000. That's a lot of money if you ask me. And since I'm over here talking about retirement, I need to make sure I can save as much as I can. So I definitely went the DIY route. Oh, you know what? I do have some good news to add. Maybe you remember watching my pergola video. Well, excuse me, I learned I pronounced that wrong. It's called pergola. That just sounds strange to me. Anyway, getting back to that good news. If you remember that video, I was talking about my HOA and how they wouldn't allow me to stain or paint the inside of my fence. You know, the portion where nobody can see but me. Well, to sum it up, 
They finally watched that video and talked about it and voted, and they decided to allow me to stain the inside of my fence. So I have a video coming soon that's going to be really cool. I can't wait to show you what this reveal is going to look like on the inside of my fence. Getting back to my circle, I'm working on that tiny little retaining wall to make sure it matches up with my grade perfectly. But then my wife stopped in to check on it. Again, another supervision visit, just like my son. But my wife was a little bit tougher on me. The critique was, she's not really liking it. The quality and the craftsmanship is there, but she doesn't like the look. I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? But right about now, I was really starting to feel bad about myself. My wife had just dropped that bomb on me that she wasn't liking the turnout, and that was really a bummer. You know, especially after all the time and design and labor I put into it. But, you know, that's how things work. I was feeling overheated, so I took a minute to myself and just started thinking about what I could do to make this thing look better for her. Then I moved on to the dry mortar mix, and this is just going to help aid in things from shifting and moving. And I had a little concrete left over from a previous project that I also filled in. Now, you have to ask yourself, will it work? Well, you know what? I don't know. I just work here. You see, I make these hats with my kids as a side hustle to teach them about making things with their hands and entrepreneurship. And if you want to support that journey, I'll have a link in the description box below to those hats. But getting back to the paper circle, I had this old fire pit. This thing's seen better days, but I knew I could revive it, so I came up with a plan. I started to sand it down and get it back down to bare bones. And I was about to paint this thing black, and my wife stepped in and said I would really love it if you would paint it copper. So you know what? I gave her what she wanted. I made this thing copper. And I think she was right. It looks really amazing. And then I had these old Adirondack chairs that I made years ago, and I decided to give them a makeover as well. I refastened them down and then spray painted them with a couple of coats of black paint. While this project is coming together and I'm setting it up, let's talk about my costs for the DIY version. Well, for the paper material and the small retaining wall blocks, it cost me $1,300. For the sand and gravel, it was $500. That's a total of $1,800, but I had some additional little costs like paint and other little materials, and it rounded up to be just a smidge over $2,000. Well, $2,100 to be exact. So if you go through the contractor's route, it was going to be a little bit over ten k And my way was just a little over $2,000. And I had a blast, and I learned a new skill. The only part of this project that sucked was this sod removal. So if there's a way to make that better, please let me know. But I did have a light bulb moment and came up with a plan. You see, my wife loves plants, flowers, and anything tropical in life. So I decided, you know what? I can give that to her. So I did a little corner makeover in the back portion of this yard. I added hydrangeas flowers. I planted these banana trees. And then I brought in all these flowers to fill up on the paver patio deck. And I thought, gosh... She's got to love it. I'm giving her what she loves in life. Plants and tropical flavor. And it came out great. And I want to tell you, she did. She absolutely loved the project. And now every day she sits out on the patio just staring at it. She genuinely loves it. So I think I did a good job. And for me in this stage of my life, I'm trying to make my backyard into a resort. One project at a time. And I'm loving this journey and every part of the process. And with the savings of over $8,000 to go the DIY route, I think I win, but I have to ask you, would you DIY this project?